So you got yourself a brand new set of skis and you see all these different mounting positions of where to put the bindings. You have no clue where to put them? Well, today's video can be going over exactly that. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to yet another Mountain Vibes video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over like the different mounting positions on your skis, you know, what they actually mean, how they're gonna affect your ride, where should you put them, where shouldn't you put them. So without further ado, let's get into today's video, shall we? So gonna start off today by saying that, you know, all those mounting positions that you actually see on the skis, like they have been designed specifically for that, for a particular ski. A lot of R&D actually goes into like where to actually put these mounting points. You know, I know this because years ago when I was actually mounting a bunch of demos for a particular brand, I was told to hold off from mounting a particular set of skis or particular style of skis because they weren't 100% sure exactly where they wanted to put it. The reason for this is because they were getting different types of feedback uh, from their testers, from different reps. Over in Europe, they would have wanted it mounted in a specific spot. Over in North America, they wanted it in a different spot. They wanted to figure out the most optimal place to mount the bindings. Now, although these are just demos, you know, you're able to kind of slide the bindings back and forth so they can kind of really dial it in and get proper feedback from the testers, from the people who are demoing the skis. So, but once it comes down to the actual production of the skis, then they actually put all those particular mounting points on it because that's just what the overall feedback of how the skis actually been designed and intended for. So with that being said, you kind of don't want to shy away too, too much from where the manufacturer is actually telling you where to put the actual bindings themselves. But at the same time, you are allowed to kind of sh like move like a centimeter or two here and there. So some brands will actually give you like the ride position, you know, plus one, plus two centimeters or minus one, minus two centimeters. So, but how will this actually affect your ride? So if you actually end up buying a ski that's the proper length for you, the proper style, uh, I would highly suggest just like leaving it in that ride position. As mentioned that this is where the ski was actually designed and intended to be skied from. Now, if you buy a ski that's going to be a slightly too long for you, let's say like you couldn't get your hands on a proper size, uh, you ended up maybe getting a new set of skis from say a friend or overall, like they're, they're just too big for you. Uh, what you could do is you can actually go a centimeter, two centimeters ahead of where the actual ride position is or the recommended position is. This is going to allow your weight to go a little bit further on in front of the ski. It's going to allow you to kind of get a little bit more control of it. Whereas if you were in the actual recommended spot, you may be a little bit too far back in the ski for your actual particular skiing style or for just your overall stature. So if you want a little bit more control, you get something that's a little bit too long, just kind of like inch it forward a little bit. Now on the opposite end, let's say you have a set of skis that's almost a little too short. You find that you're either, you know, to say nose diving in softer snow, or you just find that you, you just kind of don't quite have the same sort of drive that you normally would. You can set the bindings back one centimeter from where the recommended is. This is gonna allow your weight to come a little bit further back on the ski. It's gonna allow you to then get your weight over top of it without having to worry about the ski like skidding out or having to worry about it like to say like say nose diving in soft snow so if you get if something's a little bit short go back a little bit if you find something that you bought something that's a little bit too long you can go forward a little bit now there are a lot of people that i've come across that want their skis mounted dead center so i understand why you would want to do this you know obviously with having your weight in the middle of the ski it allows you to spin it a lot easier. It allows you to kind of do all your rails, your jibs. But the problem with it is you kind of have to be very careful with what type of ski you're actually center mounting. Uh, if you're on a full on park ski that is actually fully symmetrical, you know, meaning that the tip is the exact same length as the tail, by all means, you can do it. But the thing is though, nowadays, a lot of freestyle skis are having a little bit more rocker at the front than they do at the tail. Now, so what happens is if you actually go into the dead center of the ski, you have actually now moved yourself ahead of the camber line in the ski. So the, what's gonna happen here is though, when you go to lean into it, say if you go out of the park, you wanted to do a bunch of quick like, groomer laps, or you wanted to like, maybe jump in and out of the trees a little bit, your balance is gonna be thrown completely off because you are now ahead of the way the ski was actually designed to ski. So keep in mind that if you do want to center mount, you do want to make sure that it is an actual park ski that you've actually purchased. And even then, if you look at the sidewalls of skis and you actually see all the different markings, their park or freestyle section of the ski is actually isn't dead center. It's actually a centimeter or two back based on the way that the ski itself has actually been designed. So 
if you actually buy a park ski, stick with what the actual manufacturer is telling you to do, because if not, you're gonna find that the ski is actually not gonna perform the way that you actually want it to. Now, what happens if you come across a ski that's got, you know, recommended, but then several centimeters forward is like their freestyle or free ride, and then you kind of go a little bit more far forward and it's like park. So this is gonna drastically change how much the ski will actually ski. Now you kind of have to keep in mind and kind of think of yourself like, where do you see yourself skiing the most? If you're a type of skier who kind of like likes to dabble in the park a little bit, but you're more groomers or trees, you know, I would recommend kind of keeping it either at the recommended spot or kind of like inching yourself forward a little bit, help move your center of gravity a little bit more for forward in the ski, allowing you to kind of spin it a little bit more and allowing you to just kind of get a little bit more control of the ski if by chance you wanted to do a little bit more freestyle. So that's it for me for today, everybody. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Any questions, please feel free to leave down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, hit that button, It'd be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you are not already. Please don't forget to support your local ski and snowboard shop. Stay safe out there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.